Welcome to the Breakfast Leadership Show, where we interview global thought leaders on business, leadership, and life. Here's your host, keynote speaker, best-selling author, and chief burnout officer of the Breakfast Leadership Network, Michael Levitt. Welcome back. I've got Anthony Hughes on the line. Anthony, how are you? I'm very well, thanks, Michael. Great to be here. I'm thrilled to have you here. You've done some amazing work and a, a global you know, kind of work and worked with some really, really important endeavors. So why don't you share a little bit about you with the audience and then we'll dive into the conversation. Uh, yeah. So um, again, thanks for, thanks for having me today, Michael. So my name is Anthony Hughes. I am CEO and co-founder of Tech Elevator. And we are a rapid reskilling program that helps individuals with high cognitive ability learn the skills to uh, compete and, um, and, and be employed in the technology field. Uh, we work with both individuals who are trying to improve their careers and lives through tech education, as well as companies who are trying to uh, invest in, in their employee base uh, to, uh, to, to shore up their workforce for, to be more globally competitive in the, in the digital age. That's absolutely critical work that needs to be done. So thank you for creating a company. That's not an easy thing to do to launch your own company, but for doing that because so many organizations and individuals need to bring up their skills to the demands of what we have now and what we will have over the next 10 to 20 years with technology, smartphones, automated devices, all these things, there's technology behind those things. So we need people to develop you know, all the new bells and whistles that, uh, that we want as society uh, and organizations are, are, are smart to invest in their people and, and be able to bring these uh, skills to light. Oh, absolutely. I couldn't be more true. Um, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, so over the last couple of years, uh, we've been dealing with a, a, a tiny little global pandemic. And you know, what were some of the you know, discoveries that you found uh, with, with people and training and, and technology and all that over the last couple of years that uh, uh, you really were able to address uh, with the work that you do? Yeah, so you know, it's interesting because prior to the pandemic, you know, and so we found a tech elevator in Cleveland, Ohio, and, and I actually have a background in economic development. So, so the, 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 um, the, you know, the genesis of tech elevator was really about changing the profile of the workforce in Cleveland, Ohio, which was a, a city that I had kind of, I'm an adopted son of. I married a, a girl from Cleveland and, and, and made a home here. And, um, my co-founder and I started the company really to solve a problem locally, which was a city like Cleveland was very much sort of rooted in its industrial past and was unable to really capture the opportunity of a digital future in large part because the workforce didn't have the skills that it needed to fuel the growth of companies locally. Um, you know, as we grew the company, we opened up in Columbus and Pittsburgh and, and Cincinnati and, and a number of sort of Midwest and, and, and East Coast sort of markets that were communities trying to reinvent themselves. And we were very committed to in-person education. Um, something about Tech Elevator that you should know is that we're the number one performing program of our kind in the country. Um, we have our outcomes are published and you know, we, um, we consistently graduate over 90% of our students and place over 90% of our students. And so pre pandemic, we were outperforming the industry and, um, a number of people came to us and they said, you yeah, know, you should really be an online educator. There's so much more growth in online education. And we said, look, in, in, with all due respect, um, our outcomes that we're producing are 20 to 30% higher than the best online educator. Uh, currently in operation, in good conscience, we're not going to become an online educator because we don't want to see our outcomes dip as a result. Well, the pandemic didn't give us any choice. We had to become an online educator and we had a, an obligation and a duty to our students to see them be successful and help them get placed. Well, you know, at a time when 20 million people got laid off in April of 2020, um, Tech Elevator posted a 90% plus job placement rate that month. And um, as we started to sort of survey the landscape, we realized that we'd made an error. We had literally been comparing apples to oranges um, when it came to our decision to go online. And when we were forced online and continued to produce the best in outcomes in the industry, we said, well, hang on a second. Here's a path to impact more people more quickly 
and provide more scalability. So, um, you know, if I had a do-over, we wouldn't have had the pandemic. It's been jarring in many ways, but the silver lining uh, is that we've developed capabilities that give us faster paths to growth and opportunities to amplify our impact more broadly, not just domestically, but with some of the work that we do internationally as well. A good friend of mine likes the phrase, tragedy creates opportunity. And you were forced into it because, well, we're not allowed to play with each other inside. We have to do something different. So you created the the online platform and you were still able to get those same results, which speaks volumes to you know the curriculum and the training that you do that you're able to train people properly where they can be placed and be a valued employee. And I want to go back to something you said earlier on and, you know, launching in, in Cleveland. I'm originally from Detroit. So Midwest industrial auto sector, of course, for Detroit and uh, lived for a period of time in Windsor, Ontario, which is kind of a mere city of Detroit when it comes to industrial and things. And Whenever, and you'll recognize this with your economic development background too, there are certain sectors, especially the auto sector, that when things are good, it's great. Everyone's having the time of their life, but there are many times when it's not good and there's layoffs and cutbacks and plant closing and all that. And you see towns really struggle and and suffer and you know some situations you know in the case of you know certain parts of Michigan where the auto sector just up and left a town and and basically left the town to die and those are communities that because they were all trained on working in factories and industrial type work they weren't given the opportunity to learn some additional skills that were marketable and demand did today. And the fact that you're doing that, and you know, you said Cleveland and Pittsburgh and Cincinnati and those 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 cities that for the longest time were industrial based, I'm thrilled that those cities are making the shift away from the industrial age and going towards the information age and digital and AI and all the other things that we need as a society because we've moved on from those things. Even, you know, I think about, you know, Tesla's real quick, you know, and the number of parts that are in a Tesla compared to the number of parts that are in a Chevrolet automobile, it's dramatically less. So what does that mean? That means there's less companies making parts, which means there's less jobs making parts for those types of vehicles, which means people that have been working in those types of fields really need to look at other opportunities. And again, that's why I'm so thrilled that your organization exists because it gives people an opportunity to do something for jobs that are going to be in demand for the foreseeable future. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it, it's incredibly rewarding work that we, we get to do. I mean, we, we really do act as an inflection point in people's lives. Uh, the average student who comes to Tech Elevator is about 31 years old. They've had years of career experience already. Um, they're oftentimes transitioning from one industry to another. And, you know, the sort of commonality between the students who come to us is that they know they're smart. They just have this inherent sense, like, I should be doing more rewarding, more challenging uh, work. There should be more opportunity, and I'm just really struggling to find it. And... Um, you know, they get sort of bitten by the technology bug. Maybe they know somebody that's in the field. Maybe they started to sort of dabble online with some coding challenges and, and they come to us and, and we really help accelerate that path. We do it in a 14 week program or we do it in a 30 week program part time, but we're able to elevate somebody's earning potential on average by $24,000, uh, in as little as 14 weeks. And the really exciting thing, because we keep in close contact with our alumni, is they're seeing on average 10% salary increases year after year. Um, so we believe uh, that the economic impact on an individual basis, the increase in lifetime earnings associated with our, our, our coding bootcamp, um, is about $1.3 million more than they would have made had they stayed in their, their current career and on their current trajectory. And I just want to put this into context because the Lumina Foundation, which studies higher education, says that the value of a college degree, a four-year college degree, is $500,000 more than a high school diploma. 
So we're able to achieve in as little as 14 weeks, $1.3 million in salary left. And many of those people already had college degrees, as many as 50 to 60% of our participants come to us for, with, with college degrees already. So it's incredibly gratifying to, to be giving somebody an option in as little as 14 weeks to be able to plug back in, reskill, and get into a field that is so in demand and so highly meritocratic that they are welcomed and rewarded for that love of learning and that, that you know, the, 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 their willingness and uh, courage to invest in themselves. Yeah, 14 weeks to see those types of increases uh, is almost unheard of, but you've proven it time and time again, because again, it boils down to a supply and demand type of situation. There's a big demand for people with these skills and the supply isn't where it needs to be. So that's why you come into it. And one thing that you know, came to mind when we were talking a couple of minutes ago, that I want to dive in a little bit more before we wrap up is your economic development background, that plays a huge part in the success of what you're doing, in my opinion, and observation is because you have an observation of, okay, well, the work you're doing with Cleveland and, and Cincinnati and all that, it's, the, the intent is to develop an economic region with training that can bring in the workforce that will improve that region. Many entrepreneurs, you know, they're thinking, I have a product or service that does really well, and it's going to do this, and I'm going to get this type of ROI and all that. But your economic dev background has to play a huge part in the component of why your, your team's so successful. Yeah, I mean, you know, we are a very mission-driven company. The mission of Tech Elevator is to elevate people, companies, and communities. So, you know, fundamentally, we believe and have proven that cognitive ability lies evenly in the general population. We believe about 30% of the general population have the cognitive ability to code. So when we can find those individuals, give them the skills that align with demand in the workforce, those individuals can help companies grow locally. In other words, not outsource their work outside of the region, outside of the country, but grow locally, contribute to the economic vibrancy of the community. And, you know, that, that rising tide, if you will, can flow all boats. And so, you know, um, the the opportunity and what we're proving is that we are able to in many ways act as sort of a um uh you know a, 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 a catalyst for a community to activate its own potential starting with the individuals in that community and when you look at cleveland where we started the company we have over 700 individuals who were no, who were non-technical who are now working in the tech ecosystem uh, and, you know, in aggregate, those individuals represent nearly a billion dollars in increased lifetime uh, earnings, and that gets felt in the city. And so what's so exciting about this is, you know, we think a lot as a nation about our global competitiveness. How do we make sure that we stay ahead of India and China? Well, both of those countries produce more computer science degrees than we do. Uh, in fact, Poland produces more computer science degrees than we do. But higher education is still fundamentally a privileged path. We're proving through our methodologies that we can create new paths that don't require privilege, that can be done shorter and more efficiently and effectively, that can change an individual's life, change the talent landscape for companies, um, add more vibrancy to the communities that we're in. But in aggregate, it gives us an opportunity to really rethink how we compete on a global level. And it's a future that includes everybody. Um, and, you know, one of the things we're so excited about is the way in which we've been able to increase diversity in the technology industry through our scholarship programs, through greater participation of historically underrepresented groups in tech. And look, you know, when, when we're building the products of the future, they need to be built by all of us with the creativity of all of us um, coming together. And, you know, we're able to attract incredible people to Tech Elevator's mission uh, on our team uh, to enable us to sort of really have that impact uh, in the communities that we're in. Well, it's amazing. I'm, I'm thrilled that you, you touched on the diversity piece of it because, yeah, the global market has amazing talent that has been untapped through a variety of reasons. One, you know, the 
the economic inability of many to be able to get a college education that so many of us uh, were fortunate enough to be able to, to do with or without student loans. Some of us might still be paying those student loans. And I, I, I feel your pain on that one. It took a while to get mine paid off when I got my degree. And I know I used to work in healthcare that and I know physicians might be paying their student loans until they retire, but you know that's that's kind of the name of the game. But the fact of creating access to people that would in the past not have had access to it changes the landscape of their world, their community, and ultimately improves our our planet because again, it taps into the resources and the skill sets of people that have unfortunately haven't been utilized uh, to the best that we could do. So where do you see things going in the next, let's say, couple of years? I don't want to say five years because uh, no one predicted the pandemic, but where do you see things you know, in the next couple of years as we're kind of exiting this uh, pandemic situation and, and going into a variety of different challenges globally, of course, but where do you see things going? Um, I mean, for Tech Elevator, you know, it's sort of more of the same. You know, we're, um, we've been steadily growing the company. Um, we're one of the largest uh, producers of sort of non-traditional producers of talent in the country at this point. We've got the best outcomes. And so, you know, part of our mission is to, is to really sort of, you know, um, expand and amplify our impact. And that involves, you know, um, taking a, uh, an active role in more communities that involves expanding our online learning so that more people around the country can, can, um, can access Tech Elevator and expanding our capacity. Um, significantly expanding our hiring network. We have 700 companies that we work with, but we believe there's room for, you know, 1500 uh, companies. And, and we'd like to see more of our graduates working in more companies in the last year. Google, um, eBay, uh, PayPal, Visa, MasterCard have all added to our hiring network, and we're always interested in, in, in finding great talent from more companies. And then on the topic of companies, you know, what we're really excited about is we're seeing companies who are forward thinking, um, you know, uh, uh, make real uh, substantial investments in reskilling their employees. And so, you know, we've, we've, we've seen a couple of layoffs happen. We've seen, you know, a little bit of a pullback. Um, and oftentimes, um, you know, when those layoffs are going to happen or, or it's determined that there's a group of employees that don't have the skills that a company needs, you know, historically, we've just sort of, you know, companies have just sort of tossed those individuals on the trash heap, you know, and gone looking for skills elsewhere. Well, what we've proven with companies is that cognitive ability lies even in your employee base. And your future developers and technologists already exist in your company. They just don't know how to code yet, but they have institutional knowledge. They have cultural alignment. They have awareness of, of the challenges that your businesses face. Who better to build the products that solve the problems that your businesses face than the individuals who've experienced them firsthand in other parts of your business? And so. We're so excited about the relationships we have with companies like Coles and JP Morgan Chase and Key Bank, who are really leading the way and proving that you can do good and do well at the same time. You can source phenomenal talent and make real investments that give you a competitive advantage. And it's been a, it's been a true pleasure working with companies that, that lead in that way. That's awesome. Exciting times ahead for you and your organization. So, Anthony, I love this conversation. Where can people find out more about you and this amazing work you're doing? Great. So, uh, it's easy to find out. Uh, we are Tech Elevator. And so, you'll find us at www.techelevator.com. Uh, it, it spells like it sounds. Um, we have a free aptitude test that people can take if they want to see if they've got the cognitive ability to code. Uh, and, uh, yeah, just to really appreciate uh folks interested in the business and appreciate the opportunity to be here today, Michael. Well, I'll definitely have all that information in the show notes. So again, thank you so much for your time and congratulations on this really, really, really critical work that you're doing. So thank you again for being on the show. Thank you. Thanks for listening to The Breakfast Leadership Show, part of The Breakfast Leadership Network. Visit breakfastleadership.com for tips on empowering your business and your life.